all right so in this video we're going to look at how you can use stripe to collect payments we are going to go from the very basics we are going to see how you can collect payments using payment links for someone who is not familiar with code and then we are going to go a little bit up the ladder and see how you can architect a solution where you can collect payments from the user and provision them with their benefits automatically now we are not going to dive into code in this video but i just want to show you how you can build a system yourself and if you're someone who is not really familiar with code the first method is going to be really useful for you i also have some bonus tips that could save you a lot of money when you're dealing with stripe so make sure you stick around till the end of the video so yeah let's get started all right so first of all to get started let's go to stripe.com you will see a home page like this now let's log into our account by clicking on sign in on the top and now here you should be presented with various login options go ahead and log in with your preferred method once you sign in you will be redirected to the stripe dashboard if you're doing this for the first time you might be asked to do some setup according to your business details make sure you do that but once you're here just make sure that you are in the sandbox mode because you should be testing in this mode this is basically the test mode for stripe where no transactions mean anything all the money is fake and you can simply use test cards to perform a payment and check if your integration is working properly or not so make sure you are testing in sandbox mode only now there are a few things i really want to show you about stripe first of all is the transactions tab here you will see all of the different transactions you have had in your account i have used this account for a tutorial before so i have a lot of them here you can also go to customers and see your existing customers in stripe dashboard this does not reflect the customers which might be in your database these are just the ones which are created while processing a payment the next thing i want to show you is a product catalog here you can actually create a new products so i have two products here both are subscriptions both are per month subscriptions one is pro max which is 200 dollars a month and one is pro which is 20 dollars a month you can also go ahead and create a product here creating a product is absolutely recommended i would never want you to do dynamic pricing unless you really know what you're doing but just go ahead create your product and you can also have it in a one-off mode so that it's not a subscription it's just one normal payment and you can simply just go ahead and click on add product all right so now we have the prime subscription which is not exactly subscription it's a one-off payment which is a thousand dollars now how do you make sure that you are charging people for this so if you're looking for a no code method you can simply just go to a transactions tab and here you can simply create a new payment and here you can simply click on payment link and here you can simply find the product you want so if i want to charge somebody a subscription i can choose pro or pro max or if i want somebody to do a one-off payment i can simply choose prime here it depends on what products you have made so i can simply choose prime here and i can choose the quantity and uh, there are a lot of different type options you can handle here i recommend playing with this a lot and then you can simply go ahead and click on create link this should go ahead and create a link which you can share with your customers and you can make sure that they pay and you can uh, check the payment status on your stripe dashboard and make sure you provision them in your application or however you are like selling services to them so if i just go to this link i should be asked to do a payment so let's go to this link perfect now it says choose a currency i am in india so it's showing indian currency and then this thousand dollars you can choose whatever you want from this point it depends completely on the user side so stripe is going to handle all the payment related stuff for you but i just want to show you something to you so i'm just going to enter my email here and if you want your test transactions to succeed and this only works in sandbox mode by the way you can simply add card details as 4242442 and this card basically means that this is going to be a successful transaction and you can simply enter any random name i can simply just say atharva deosthale and i can simply just go ahead and click on pay and uh, i don't want to save this card all right now it says thanks for your payment a payment to stripe will appear on your statement again this is not going to be a real account so you won't get any charges but this is very good to test out your flow so if i just go to stripe dashboard again and if i go to transactions you are going to find this specific transaction here thousand usd succeeded now we're going to look at how you can architect a solution in your tech stack to use stripe and collect payments from the user so just imagine that this is your back end and uh this is your front end so i'm gonna have a front end here and uh yeah i'm, I'm simply gonna label this your front end could be anything it could be a mobile application it could be your website it could be anything 
the back end however it needs to be a server so you definitely do need a server if you're handling stripe payments in application so this back end could be anything you can also use app right which is a back end as a service to help you save a lot of time and effort in setting up a back end but if you just go ahead and look in the tutorial in the description below i will show you exactly how you can set up stripe with app right so make sure you go ahead and watch that but back to the topic what happens is your front end ask your back end that hey I want to buy the Pro Max plan. You see a button on your front end which says uh, buy Pro Max and it says $20 or $100, whatever it was. And you ask the backend, hey, that I want this plan. So what backend does is backend contact Stripe. So this is a big box and I'm just, this is a big box because Stripe is the biggest part of this entire system. What happens is your backend contact Stripe. It says that, hey, I want this specific plan. What should I do about it? Give me a link so that I can forward it back to the customer so that they can go ahead and pay. So just like we created a payment link before manually, what this does is uh, Stripe automatically creates a payment link for that specific customer and sends it back to your backend, which can simply just send it back to your front end. I'm also gonna just go ahead and label this so that it's not confusing. So now that your front end has the payment link, what usually happens is that you can go ahead and redirect that user to that specific link it could simply mean that changing pages and showing that stripe page to your customer if you're using something like react native or if you're using a mobile application this could simply mean the opening and web view and showing that but there are a lot of quirks when it comes to accepting stripe payments in a mobile app so i would recommend checking out the policies of app stores if you're publishing your app to one so i'm not going to cover policies in this video maybe some other video if you want to know more about this feel free to leave a comment i will make a video on that but now what happens is that the front end directly goes back to stripe that hey i want to do this payment and the payment link just goes back to stripe and here the user does the payment and our, like at this point we are not sure like how the user is going to do it it's not a headache anymore it's stripes headache to collect the cash and send us the signal that hey this is done so what happens here is stripe will collect the payment and it will also redirect the user back to a page and here you can specify which page you can so you basically you can simply just say that hey stripe after the payment is done i want the user to come back to front end and it's completely safe to do that you can simply just skip the server in between and there's a very good reason for that and the reason is that stripe does not just rely on this specific call to tell you that the payment is succeeded stripe does not trust your front end nobody trusts your front end you should not trust your front end stripe makes a separate call to your back end so it's going to be something like this i'm just going to make this a little more curvy and i'm also going to make it stroke so this is not the user flow this is not what the user is saying this is an api call or basically a nudge to your backend that hey this payment is completed do something about it the user has paid now it's your responsibility to go ahead and provision the user whatever the benefits they have so at this point your backend gets the call and you update your databases or whatever your flow is to make sure that the user gets the benefits right then and there. Now it's really not that easy because like anybody, like any external party, I'm just gonna have this rhombus here, which is gonna be an, you know, like enemy party or something like that. Uh, this person can directly make a call here, right? And uh, it's it, it would be disastrous, right? If somebody finds out your webhook endpoint, they can simply make a call here and they can say that, hey, this payment is completed, even though that request is not from Stripe. So how do you make sure that the requests you're getting are from stripe so basically what this is is called a webhook if you don't know what webhook is webhook is a signal to your backend from various services it, it doesn't just need to be stripe it could be any other services to notify you about a change for something in that specific service so for stripe whenever there's something payment related notification you get notified through webhook so if somebody else triggers that webhook you might be screwed but then stripe webhook secret comes in play so this webhook is usually encrypted with stripe webhook secret i should not say this is encrypted this is signed by a stripe webhook secret this secret you only you and stripe know about so you can use this secret to check if the request you have received is really from stripe or not now it involves a lot of cryptography and stuff like a lot of encryption standards and stuff and i really do not know how that works but you don't need to know that it just works okay so now let's take out the attacker away from the question we don't need this attacker anymore because we cannot get attacked anymore because the attacker will not have the access to your stripe webhook secret and the backend will immediately know if 
the secret is wrong or somebody has sent a request without a secret and we can Im immediately kick that hacker out so there's one more thing is when we go back to front end here's where we should actually again go ahead and call our payment checks and why should we do that let me just go ahead and label this actually you know what there should be an arrow from front end to back end after this so i'm just gonna give it a default stroke and i'm just gonna say the payments checks so why should we do this like we are we already have a webhook right the webhook is doing its job while to notify the back end why do we want the front end to notify the back end about the changes again so the answer to this is there are times when your back end just goes down these are unexpected times that you cannot really anticipate and so there's a very good chance that if you are running a large scale application and you get a certain amount of traffic your back end literally just goes down and if you're using something self-hosted the probability increases even more and in this case what would happen is the webhook that stripe sent to your backend will fail and your backend will never know that the payment was completed as a result the user will not be provisioned and the user will be unhappy and would probably go ahead and dispute the payment or contact your support or stuff like that and doing this for many users is difficult so what do you do on the front end side as well you launch a payment check to your backend and you keep retrying until it's done or it says that the payment is failed. So what would happen is like if the, your backend is down and it comes back up the next minute, your front end gets to call it instead of for the webhook and the payment is still sorted. You, you typically should have the same logic your webhook handling event has with your payment checks so that if the web, webhook event comes later or gets missed, you can still provision the user the benefits. So just make sure that all your provisioning logic resides here in the backend and never in the front end, because again, you should never trust your front end. It can be easily hacked and people can do all sorts of things with it. So yeah, this is just an overview of the system. It is very complex to implement usually, but if you do it correctly, you can just ensure that none of your payments fail and all of your users are happy. All right, so I promised you that I would show you some bonus tips. So first of all, just go to settings here and here you should find payment section. This will have a lot of payment settings which could be useful to you. Just go down below and you will find the subscription section. And here, if you your app has a model where a user can only have one subscription at a time, make sure you go ahead and select this without fail. And the reason is if you don't have this selected and if your front end does not know if the subscription is active or not, or if you do something weird or if there is some kind of bug, Stripe will let them subscribe to another subscription in your application, which is weird. And you might get into some kind of dispute with the customer and you might lose the dispute. So you can just go ahead, enter your website. We don't have a website here. So I'm just going to have, have localhost.com, any dummy website. And yeah, now each customer will only be subscribing to one subscription at a time and they cannot subscribe to any more until the billing period is over. The next thing I want you to do is go ahead into the payment methods section. And here you will find all of the different payment methods you can choose from. And yeah, there are a lot of different ones, but what I have heard is the cash app pay is not the one you should be using. A lot of people have experienced that there are just people who get their stuff refunded immediately. And mostly people use this in the intention of just exploiting your application. So I would just go ahead and turn this off. Either way, you have a lot of different payment methods here from cards to like other applications. You can save a lot of money on avoiding disputes overall. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. So if you found this video helpful, make sure you leave that in the comment down below and make sure you Tell us what you want to see when it comes to content. It doesn't need to be app right related content at all. If there's something you find interesting in this developer world, make sure you leave that in the comments below and we will make sure to cover that. So yeah, until next time.